And we're continuing on here. So what we've done is we said that e sub l is equal to e sub z cosine alpha minus e sub phi sine alpha. And the argument we've we've been using here is that all right, if you make alpha fairly small, then e sub l and e sub z pointing nearly in the same direction. And then if if alpha is made nearly 90 degrees, then e sub l and e sub phi are nearly in the opposite direction. So that's the reason we'd end up with cosine alpha minus e sub phi sine alpha. That's e sub z here in the first term. Sorry. Okay. So now, now that we have E sub L, at least we're in the same plane. We have E sub L and this direction along this direction along here uh, from O prime to P. We might call that just for lack of anything else for the moment to call it E sub P maybe. Uh, and E sub R are all in the same plane. All right. So what that means is that we can write E sub P in terms of E sub L and E sub R and take a look at what we what the angles are to, to try to figure out how we would write E sub P in terms of E sub L and E sub R. Now between E sub P and E sub L, the angle is psi. So if we make psi really small, then the windshield wiper is nearly pointing straight up. And that means that E sub P and E sub L are nearly in the same direction. So we would be able to write E sub P is equal to E sub L cosine of psi. All right, and then if psi is nearly 90 degrees, then E sub P and E sub R are in opposite directions, and so then we'd end up writing E sub R with a minus sign because it's there in the opposite directions, sine psi. And so you notice that we have E sub L here, and we have E sub L here. And so if we substitute in here for E sub L, then we end up with E sub P written in terms of, of E sub Z, E sub C, and E sub R. These are our th three coordinate uh, directions that we are using in our cylindrical coordinate system. Seems to work out all right. And in fact, that's what we've got. We've got here with E sub R sine psi with a minus sign, you notice there. And we have minus cosine psi. It's right here. And then we'll multiply that against a, a minus. See, there's a minus sign. A minus sine alpha along the e sub phi direction. There's the e sub phi direction. Minus, a minus, so it's a plus, e sub z cosine alpha. Cosine alpha and e sub z. So it all works out all right. Notice that the length here is actually just L as a scalar. It's the length of our windshield wiper from O prime out here to P. So if you're not used to using this where we're saying how we convert these coordinate system directions, the first thing you want to remember is is that each of these three coordinate system directions has to be in the same plane. Each of them, they all have to lie in the same plane. Secondly, is once you have them all lying in the same plane, then you know that you can convert one of them to the other two through sines and cosines, and as long as you define an angle between, uh, between them. And so, for example, E sub L and E sub Z, the angle between them are alpha. And, and in fact, when alpha goes to zero, then they're lying in the same direction. When alpha goes to 90 degrees, the E sub V and E sub L lie in opposite directions. That's the reason for the minus sign. When 90 degrees, that means it's going to end up being a sign. So I hope that makes some sense. If not, then the book does show an entirely different way, which I don't especially uh, prefer myself. Okay, so if we use the acceleration as we've used before, and again, you don't have to necessarily do this. We can define the position vector as you've seen here. Take the, the time derivative of it. We get the velocity vector. So we get r dot is equal to the, the time derivative of the scalar plus r e r dot, and then that would be omega cross e r, and then you take another time derivative of it, and you would still get exactly what you're looking for. So, but what we're going to do here is we're going to substitute into the acceleration equation just like we've seen before. And we know that the velocity of the car is constant, so this term is going to be zero. And so then we'll be able to cancel out the first term here and the r dot. We know that it's going around a constant radius curve, so, so we know what we're going to be able to do with that. And then, right, 
So R double dot. And so then omega B with respect to A across rho. We already have the rho term here. And we're able to write out omega B cross A. We're able to write that one out as well. And, we're, and we can find what our acceleration there is for this for this part. And all we need to do is I use the cross product with omega b with respect to a model on that. The rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system is given by by this, and then we have two omega cross rho dot with respect to the moving coordinate system as shown here. And if we substitute in all together, we end up with this rather long and drawn out equation just for the windshield wiper. So that might explain why the uh, the Audi Quattro cars ended up having windshield wipers that failed because of the the length of these kinds of things. But in any case, what you can do is you can go back and s and look back through and see what you think about each of these terms. Again, perhaps a better way to do this is to define the vector r, which is equal to cap r plus rho. Remember, we define what our rho is as, and this was um, R L times the, the rather long sines and cosines and stuff that we wrote out in that equation. And then you go and try to look for R dot, and that's cap R dot, which that turns out to be zero because the car is going around the constant radius turn. And uh, we have rho dot there. And then we're looking for the acceleration. Is cap R double dot plus O double dot, right? And do you believe me when I say that this is zero? Give some thought to that, if you would, please. All right. And just to make sure that you've watched the the lecture, the magic number is 22. So when you come to the lecture uh, in the class, the magic number is 22. Thank you.